Hi, and welcome to On the Road with Bobby Halton, and we're live at FDIC 2007. Uh, I've got with me a couple of friends, and uh, one guy who needs no introduction. He's known to about 25 million of his closest friends on the secret list, uh, Chief Billy Goldfeder from Loveland Symes. Uh, Deputy Chief, Billy always likes me to get that correct, Loveland Symes. I Simes. have a boss, and he's yes, a good boss. And he's a good <laughs> boss. Deputy Chief Goldfeder is here with me today, Billy, and uh, we brought another friend with us, so we want to talk a little bit today about firefighter life safety issues, in particular cancer. So we brought our good friend Mike DeBron. You've uh, heard enough from Billy and I over the years, but we really want to try to get the message out about health and wellness, what's going on in the fire ground, how important it is to protect yourselves, not just from the smoke, but from several other issues that are out there that are causing cancer among firefighters. But we are going to talk about smoke a little bit. We're going to talk about what happens to firefighters, how you can be preventative, but then what to do if you should find yourself in that position. Um, and Mike's going to talk us through all that and, and give you some great information. We're really happy to have Mike here with us today, too. And he was with the uh, Firefighters Cancer support, Network, Support, support Network. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mike will give you the website and all that good stuff in a little bit and how to get more information. So if you're a firefighter out there who uh, thinks you uh, may be getting uh, sick or who is sick, uh, Mike can help you. And if you're not sick, Mike will tell you what you need to do to make sure you don't get, get sick or make sure that you may be sick and not know about it, because cancer is a weird deal. Coincidentally, as we talk about this, today is the anniversary of the one year passing of our good friend Tommy Brennan, who died at 66 years of age after battling prostate cancer for over 10 years. Um, so very fitting that we're here talking about cancer today. It took one of our best, my best friend and, and one of the legends of the fire service uh, from us uh, on this day a year ago. And uh, we'll always celebrate Tommy as long as I'm here. and. Uh, and, and more importantly, let's try not to let's not try to have any more firefighters lose their lives uh, to cancer. And Mike, thanks for being here with On the Road. Well, thank you very God much. Bless you, it's an Billy. Pleasure. Always, as always, my good friend. I love having you. Mike, tell us a little about the Cancer Support Network sure. and what you're doing. Absolutely. Well, uh, back in uh, 2003, I was diagnosed with colorectal cancer, and very fortunate to have friends, uh, brother firefighters that had had cancer, and uh, we felt very lucky. And I thought, you know what? Why shouldn't we turn that luck into a program? where other firefighters, active and retired, and their family members uh, can receive assistance uh, in a diagnosis of cancer. So we formed the program out in Los Angeles. We thought, well, it's a good little grassroots program, and, uh, and sure enough, it's taken off to a nonprofit corporation now, uh, helping our brothers and sisters all over North America, interested in Australia, and believably uh, had an email from South Korea here recently. So um, what we try to do is we establish a firefighter when they make contact via the website or a toll-free number. We establish them with the survivor, the same or similar form of cancer, to help mentor them along the process. So, for instance, a firefighter with, uh, with prostate cancers we talk about, we associate them with a prostate cancer survivor, and they're able to give them the insights uh, about what treatments are like and what surgeries uh, may be coming up and, and dealing with the after effects of those things. Um, additionally, we can send them what we call a toolbox that we have available that's full of valuable information uh, that we've uh, collected uh, from our organization, from the Lance Armstrong Foundation, American Cancer Society, and so forth. Uh, one of the things we feel important is that uh, firefighters in our community, uh, our line of work, uh, the alpha male and female, we generally don't knock on the door outside of our own circle to seek assistance, so we try to open the door up to as many tools as possible to, uh, to dealing with cancer-related issues. Uh, once we do that, then uh, that person has walked down the line and given some assistance with their uh, diagnosis of cancer. Well, and what cancers, Mike, in, in your experience, are firefighters more prone to than, say, the, the, the insurance salesman? Well, um, obviously our friends at the University of Cincinnati with their recent study uh, helped us out, but uh, the ones that we see are very common, uh, multiple myeloma, uh, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, prostate cancer is a big one. Uh, so these, uh, these are all cancers. Uh, that can be devastating, and it is devastating when you're diagnosed, but uh, if detected early, most cancers are definitely curable, but you have to catch it early. And it's uh, an important fact that we try to get out there in an educational campaign, an awareness campaign, about what type of checkups you need at what types of ages, and also uh, if you have family history, understanding the importance of getting uh, aggressively checked. Billy, how are firefighters getting sick? What, what, what did we learn from our friends in Cincinnati? Well, I, I think the one thing we think of is inhalation of smoke, and if we haven't figured out the inhalation issue yet, we, we might as well just go be a baker and get out of the business. We shouldn't be breathing smoke, and people say, well, it wasn't real bad smoke. Actually, the lighter the smoke, the worse it is, as you guys certainly know. The nasty, thick smoke, we're obviously going to mask up. 
in some cases is not as bad as the smoldering smoke. Uh, the big one that hit me, Bobby, when I was talking to the people from the University of Cincinnati is the soot issue. Now, we got the mask part figured out, I hope. I mean, we still have dopes running around without wearing our masks. For the most part, we're, I think we're on our way. If you put all your gear on with no exposed skin, you also solve the soot problem. But if you don't, and, and I'll just speak as simple firefighter as I can, I need you to understand the way medicine works on a person who wants to stop smoking is they give them the patch. And the patch absorbs the medicine into the system. And Dr. LeMasters said on a discussion we had, I can't think of an easier way for a firefighter to get cancer and allow for the soot to remain on their skin. That scared the hell out of me when she said that. Because I know many times I come home, I had around here, around the face, around the arms, and I go to bed. I'm exhausted. I go back to the forest, take a nap. Right? You're incubating, you're incubating the poison. This is cancer causing stuff. And it's being absorbed into your system. As soon as you can after a job, go back, shower, clean up, clean your gear. You know, for years I used to be proud of my white helmet. You couldn't find any white on it. It was black. It was filthy and bent and everything. No more. I don't want any of that crap near me. The soot is killing us. Clean up and don't allow that stuff on you. I don't, I don't know how else plain I can say it. Uh, you, you can't say it any plainer. And, and it goes even further than that. Don't touch things that have been in fires. Your skin is the largest organ you have. Put your gloves on. Put your gloves on. And then wash them when you're done. If you're going to put the exhaust uh, system on the truck and you have to physically touch it, put your gloves on. And then, and then wash after you do it. Don't touch that stuff. Well, you know, the young diesel firefighters. Fuel. Right, diesel fuel. Say, yes. The young firefighters, we, we, not anymore, they <laughs> feel invincible. And you really do feel that way. And sometimes even today we feel that way. And then, boom, you get that knock on the door. Yeah, and, we want, and we want them to feel confident. We want them to feel self-assured. Sure. You get that from training. Right. Absolutely. But we want them to have that, that confidence should, at its, at its core, have an understanding of the risk. Yeah, well, it's we, confidence without understanding. It's just Right. We love what stability. we do. Why wouldn't we protect ourselves to keep doing it as long as we can keep doing it? Absolutely. Uh, you know, 40 years old, you get a phone where you got cancer, and you figure it out was from the stuff you were exposed to. Duh. You can't go to fires anymore. No, you can't. So, Mike, what kind of test should, what and when should a guy be thinking about getting tested, and what, what, what would you recommend we do? Well, obviously, not being a medical expert, I can surely speak uh, on colorectal cancer, what I went through, but uh, obviously one of the most, most important things that you can do is participate in a physical. Hopefully your department uh, sponsors that, but uh, to go and yearly get checked, uh, have a blood test taken, um, have chest x-rays done, now you those types PSA, of things, that type and of then thing. a PSA obviously is a very a very important thing, uh, and then for those that uh, are hitting towards the age of 50, they need to understand, you know, you have to have a colonoscopy. Uh, colorectal cancer, uh, depending on the numbers, number two, number three killer in this country, but is the most curable detected early, and guys just don't want to go out there and get a, a colonoscopy, and it's just a minor inconvenience when you look at the fact of, well, if you let it go and it becomes non-treatable, then you're faced with telling your family, hey, look, dad's, uh, dad's got cancer. He's not going to be around much longer versus, hey, dad's got to have a colonoscopy. I'll be out of service for a day. Well, and I think with a lot of <clears throat> cancers, what people fail to realize, and Billy always preaches this, it's not about you. It's about your right. sons and your daughters, your wife, your mom, your dad. I was very fortunate. I had my own uh, brush with cancer, and uh, just recently, because I'm so aware, I went in for a colonoscopy. They found a few polyps. Got them, got them early, and I'm going to be fine. Had they not been in there, that's right. You know, they would have turned out to buy. Well, this yeah, year I got mine scheduled in May. I'm yeah, not looking forward to it, but what the hell? You know what? You're in and you're out, and yeah, for right. me, it, it was my I don't know, it was my fourth or fifth or sixth one. I can't tell you how many I've had, but it was no big deal. It was routine, and this time it paid big dividends. Yeah, so absolutely. You can't think that yeah, you, know, you know, especially at my age and and Billy's age. It, you're a little younger still, yeah. but look at your history. You're younger than both of us, and, right. and you're the guy who got you know sick. Who it went? Lo you were in you longer. That's right. You know, so age is really an interesting thing. We say fifty. Katie Couric's uh, husband, uh, absolutely fine gentleman, early forties, right? Wasn't yes. he early forties? And he passed away, and uh, you know, God bless him. God bless her, because she's really uh, you know say what you will she's about her. Yeah. You know, I don't care what people you know. That she's not a great news host. I think she's a wonderful lady. The fact that she had the guts to go on and do that, yes. and every firefighter our age should be telling every kid, 
it's no big deal. Right. That, that whole silliness has got to stop. Right. And digital exams. Uh, digital exams can, you know, if your doctor ain't doing a digital during your physical. Explain what a digital exam is. A digital is when the doctor actually inserts his fingers into the rectum and what he's looking for oh, there okay. is blood and, and he's feeling around for any unusual feels. That's very important. It's so a younger audience absolutely. is thinking digital, like radios or something. Oh, yeah, digital, yeah, like radios. Yeah. Yeah. Digital, digital fingers. Exam, fingers. Yes. That's what they do. The yeah. digits. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and guys laugh about it, and that's that's great. But the reality of it is... The reality is it makes a difference. Right. That's right. A doc who's not doing it is selling you short, right. Right. putting you at risk. And, 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 and so, you know, demand that you get a good physical. Go absolutely. for it. PSA, you mentioned briefly, that means prostate-specific antigen. Yes. And what that shows is if, this, if it's in your system. That's correct. So besides that, let's talk about our, our, our sister firefighters. What should they be doing? What kind of tests should they be looking at? Well, obviously the gals are susceptible to colorectal cancer as well. It's a non-gender specific type cancer, but of course it's important uh, for them to go out and get their breast examinations. We've actually been contacted by a, uh, a, an organization that's uh, introducing a uh, a self-examination, she asked me, she said, would firefighters be interested in going home with information on how to examine their wife's breast for an examination? I think I think that was pretty much a home run. So <laughs> we're looking forward to making that available to firefighters. But the gals need to go out there and they need to learn how to do a self-examination. They need to go in there and get a, uh, a mammography if, that's, uh, if they're the correct age or if they have family history understanding. And again, if they are going to get it, early diagnosis is the key to beating cancer. Well, and, and, I'm sorry, Billy, go ahead. Well, I think there was just recently a, uh, a firefighter in San Francisco who died from breast cancer. That's exactly uh, right. A female firefighter, and they tied it to the job, and it's going to be an LODD. Yes, That's exactly right. And, and I, I thought I heard somewhere that men can do a testicular uh, physical exam. I, I, you know, the, the Armstrong Foundation was saying something about it. Because that's what got Lance Armstrong was testicular cancer. That's correct. So it's really an issue that I think is, uh, it's like you're crazy out in the basement. Nobody wants to talk about it. Yes. Uh, you know, we're all ignoring it. Everybody thinks it's not going to happen to me. Right. Yes. And the reality is, and I, you hate to say this, given what we're dealing with today, and I'm not going to get into the science, but given with what's burning today, just the products of combustion that are around you, we're being exposed to more and more dangerous yeah, stuff. Every fire is a hazmat. Yes. Every, every fire is a hazmat. Yeah, but, but when we started, we could tell if it was a house fire because it was brown smoke. Right. There was yes. no more brown smoke. Yep. It's black. Yep. You know, and, and Billy said it earlier, it's that light, wispy, fine stuff that has the real killers in it. That's right. You know, and, and a lot of the stuff that we use. So what else? How, and how can somebody find the Firefighter Cancer Support Network? Where well, do they go? we're real, real proud to go on the website and uh, get us at firefightercancersupport.org. Firefightercancersupport.org, all that's in correct. one deal. Or on uh, Chief Goldfeder's uh, secret or uh, firefightercloscalls.com. Close call there's, com. A, there's a link on there. Big banner on the left side. Absolutely. Um, or they can call us toll free at 866-994-FCSN. And that uh, is staffed 24 hours a day. One and, more time. Uh, nine, uh, correction. 866-994-FCSN. Good. And um, that's staffed 24 hours a day. And... Uh, that call will be directed to the appropriate person. We have a wellness coordinator now who uh, coordinates folks that are requesting assistance. Who's and, funding uh, all this? Well, who's funding it? Uh, that's a that's a always a, a challenging deal. But uh, our local 1014 in Los Angeles has been very uh, very uh, helpful in uh, getting us up and going. Uh, we've had the support of the California Professional Firefighters and the IAFF as well. And we're actually uh, getting ready to launch a payroll contribution program where we hope that firefighters that want to donate to our program can do that to help us as we grow. Uh, we're looking to establish uh, regional directors throughout North America and Australia this year. Um, and we'd like to host a conference in possibly 08, 09 to bring everybody together and talk about these cancer-related issues that are very important to us. Well, Mike is going to be here next year at FDIC, and we're going to be, Mike's going to be doing a program for us about yeah. Firefighter Cancer Support Network and about Survivor and, and how to move on in your life. But we're starting to, we have an editorial coming out soon, and I don't care that we're blowing it, but we're going to be asking people to look at 5%. And we're going to be saying if maybe try to lose five pounds or five percent of your weight. Yes. Try try to do five percent of whatever you're doing that's good for you, whether it's reading the Bible, whether it's tithing, whatever you're doing, five percent. Maybe if you're thinking that way and you've lost a brother or sister or your mom or dad or you yourself as a survivor, maybe five percent. Send five percent of one week's pay or one month's pay. Send it to the Firefighter and Cancer Support Network and 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 do something good with your money. Just five percent. That's great. Five yeah. percent is nothing. And if we all did five percent more every day in a good way, you know, the world would be a 
be a hundred percent better place. That's a great deal. A little less bacon, a little less sausage, a little less, you know I mean, yeah. break a sweat every day. I heard that sure. the other day. I said, what a great response. Just do a little exercise every day. Uh, you know, we all have a half hour. We really do. Oh, we're busy. We're all busy. Half hour a day, a little treadmill, a little lifting, eat a little less. It really makes a big difference. Take that, yeah. take that 10 bucks you were going to buy that last round of beers with your buddy and say, hey, you know what? I'm going to send it to Mike and the guys over at the yeah, cancer support. put it support. on your boss's credit card, pay for the beer that way. Absolutely. <laughs> One of the other uh, important things, too, is that we try to get firefighters to uh, log on to our website and create an account. It doesn't cost a dime. Okay. But uh, what that allows us to do is if a, a brother or sister firefighter is going through cancer-related issues and is in need of uh, a marrow or oh, blood or, um, or platelets, then we've helped firefighters that need an emergency uh, blood or platelets in and uh, we can send an email blast out and immediately, whether it's Dallas, New York, Chicago, wherever just, it's at. We just did that together for the little boy in San Francisco. How Absolutely. did that turn out? Well, um, we, uh, we talked to them recently. They're having some struggles and they're going through uh, what they've uh, they found the closest match possible and they're going to go with that right now. So, uh, yeah, they've been on the home page of our website. Uh, we had members of our program. Uh, down in Los Angeles uh, and in San Francisco, contacting uh, Asian American community churches, trying to get as many people as we can to possibly go out there and be tested for marrow and uh, try to find a match for this poor child. Well, in case people don't know, we're talking about a young firefighter's, uh, firefighter's son. Correct. And uh, struggling with, with uh, cancer, and uh, he needs a bone marrow transplant. That's correct. He has a rather rare uh, genetic uh, yeah. or ethnic yeah, heritage. So e ethnicity plays a role in bone marrow. Absolutely, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Oh, that's tough. That's yes. Tough. But we're going to keep doing that kind of stuff, Mike. And anytime Great. you need fire engineering, you know, we're right there with you. Well, thank uh, you. Mike reached out to us. We were, we were proud to do it. And, and not just for firefighters either. If there's, you know, other folks. So if a volunteer firefighter out there doesn't have health insurance, can he contact you? And we have ways to try to help these folks out. Ab absolutely. Um, it doesn't cost anything to uh, associate somebody with a, uh, a cancer survivor. And we also... Uh, we ask uh, any firefighter or our spouse or family member that's a survivor uh, to join our program. Get with our wellness coordinator. Get your name on the list and become a become a, a member. Uh, it's a it's a kind of tough sorority or fraternity to get into. Nobody really wants to be there. But um, you know, when uh, I'm involved with this program and, and surround myself with these folks, uh, I think it's one of the greatest collection of firefighters that we have here. Uh, in the world is uh, a group of firefighters that are cancer survivors willing to help others. Well, I can it's tell you it's not a union, it's not a volunteer, no, it's no, a firefighter. And it's great. It's, it's good for everybody. And I can hear Tommy Brennan saying right over my shoulder, you know, do it. You know, you well, you would have said F and do it. You yeah. say what? F and do it. Yeah, Thomas, <laughs> <laughs> Thomas had a list. Oh, it's not what it was. Yeah. But Tommy, <laughs> Tommy would be, you know, if you give, not for nothing else, but if you've ever read any of Tommy's writings and you want to do something, pay back Tommy. Go out, get checked, pay attention, um, stay well, stay away from smoke. Don't play in anything that's dangerous. You know, yeah, absolutely. It's, it's 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 all about staying healthy. Yeah. Mike, we really thank you for being on the road with me well, today. It's and an I absolute appreciate pleasure. It. Thank you very we'll much. See you. For Mike, your will be, Mike will be here next year. Uh, take a look if you've got any questions, concerns. Mike will be doing a classroom presentation for us. We know it'll be great. Plenty of information out there. Billy, as always, my good friend. Thank you, bro. I'll be seeing you on the road, I know for sure. This has been On the Road with Bobby Halton, and we'll see you all again next time on the road.